What's up guys? Thanks for coming back to Lockdown Universe. Just wanted to let you guys know that Anchor now is allowing you to become part of the Lockdown Universe experience by uh, part becoming part of the subscription. We're only charging $1.99 currently and we want you to be part of the experience. We're going to offer unheard of whistleblower testimony as well as government insider information as well as folks who have undergone hypnotic regression and told us their story. So please tune into that if you are interested for deeper cuts and deeper information. Please consider being part of the subscription. It's only $1.99 and it's definitely worth it. So join in. Let's get to the show. Welcome back to Lockdown Universe, some of the bizarre, peculiar, and unheard of stories of UFO legend and lore. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. This time we have an interesting one, guys. This is kind of terrifying, and if you listen to UFO podcasts and have done your research, you know how crazy these alien abductions can be, and this one definitely takes the cake, or at least one of the cakes, maybe a chocolate cake, because... These guys are pretty malicious in this particular abduction event. Um, this event happened back in the 70s. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull it up here for you. Um, in 1976, January 6, at about 11.15 p.m., Louise Smith and Mona Stafford and Elaine Thomas were traveling in Stanford, Kentucky. And what happens next is the stuff of nightmares. What happens next... Nobody should ever have happened to them. What happens next? I don't know. I'm going to have nightmares about for quite a while. <clears throat> so as they were driving south, right? And this always happens like around midnight between the hours of like 11 to, to 2 a.m., right? 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. And they were tra traveling on U.S. Route 27 in Stanford, Kentucky, which is about an hour south of Lexington, where they claimed they were abducted. Uh, the women were driving down the highway, coming back from the Redwood restaurant, and as they were leaving, uh, they were all in a happy mood, uh, and all of a sudden, they saw this object in the sky, which they perceived to be an airplane on fire. Now, many of us have seen airplanes. Not too many of us have seen airplanes on fire. The object appeared to be red in color, and coming down and dropping from the sky, they assumed that this was an airplane on fire and they were bracing themselves to see if it was going to crash somewhere near, as anybody would, right? If you saw something about to crash, you'd be kind of clinching your, your, your muscles together and kind of concerned about the folks that were on the plane. And <clears throat> all of a sudden, this object stopped on a dime and the disc-shaped UFO was clearly visible through the side windows of Smith's 1967 Chevy Nova. Uh, and they began to accelerate. So apparently this object, instead of crashing somewhere near, all of a sudden stopped on a dime and was able to be seen right through their window. Um, so although Smith had taken her foot off the gas pedal, the c car kept going faster to reach 85 miles an hour. They're almost, almost pulling some back to the future 88 miles per hour stuff here. And Smith struggled to control the car, and the women never lost sight of the UFO. And it was, they were keeping pace with it, basically, over the treetops, almost as if the UFO was in control of the car. Almost as if, not almost as if, it actually was. So they said it hung above the trees at about 100 feet in the air, so this thing was like directly over them. All of a sudden, a blue light came into the car, and uh, they thought it might be the highway patrol, but they knew it was not the highway patrol. <clears throat> so all of a sudden, they felt heat. And um, the next thing they remember is they were back on the highway, riding in the car, and they were quite hot as if they had been subjected to some extreme heat, like put under a sun lamp. When they got back home, they realized they lost about an hour and 25 minutes worth of time. So all the women were burned and shaken, and they all went to their neighbor's house, and the neighbor told them to draw what they remember and to write down what they remembered. So... What's interesting is, is that when they came into the case, um, they started to draw and write down what happened. They all were subjected to polygraphs. They all passed under hypnosis, which is interesting. Like, even back in the 70s, they were doing hypnosis. Uh, all three women claimed they were taken aboard this object and given a physical examination. Elaine 
was put in a glass cubicle, which was very dark, and she could see figures of small beings walking around the glass outside. Now, here is where it starts to get terrifying. Here is where this is the stuff of nightmares, okay? So she had skin scrapings taken off of her chest. That doesn't sound so bad, although it's still bad. Who wants their skin scraped off of their chest, right? But many folks had that done um, with some some of the, uh, uh, I believe it was the polio vaccine where they had to scrape part of your skin off of your arm. I remember my mom had had that on uh, had done had that done to her. Um, so when you scrape the skin like that, it literally never goes away. It's always there. Um, but this is the next part. After she had her skin scraped, Mona actually had her eyes removed from their sockets and laid on her cheeks, taken out of her head and placed on her cheeks, folks. This stuff is the stuff of nightmares, guys. Okay. This is why they don't want us to remember. Okay. Placed on her cheeks. All of this is done without her will. All of this is done without her say-so. She didn't sign off on a waiver saying, I'm going to have this happen to me. She didn't say okay about this. This is just what they did. Then they placed the eyeballs back into her sockets. Uh, other women claimed that their arms and legs were twisted in a very painful manner. As, and when they asked what it felt like, uh, if it felt like torture, they all said no. Um, they stated, we've got eight hours of tapes of hypnosis of these women, and believe me, they are not pleasant to hear. Most of it, they are all crying, according to Black. So, we have eight hours of these poor women going under, underneath hypnos hypnotic regression, having to be subject to these alien abductions, having to be having their eyeballs taken out of their sockets. I mean, the, dude, come on. This is just ridiculous. So, um, Black, who was part of this event, um, has done the most research um, and has continues to investigate the entire event, uh, keeps in touch with the two surviving women. Um, as each year passes, um, he believes that less, less and less the UFOs could be extraterrestrial in origin. Um, which is interesting. Um, but the abduction claims of Louise Smith, Mona Stafford, and Elaine Thomas are not unusual, says Mr. Black, who is the uh, investigative journalist investigating this particular case. Um, he states that there are still thousands of people on the planet, sincere people like yourself, like me, like anyone who's walking out on the street today who sincerely believe they were abducted. Um, so he actually tried to expose them to see if they were a hoax or a false claim or trying to make money on it. And he said, no, there's something out there. You can believe what you want to believe, but there's definitely something out there. So, you know, it just goes to show you how deep this stuff goes, how, how the lengths with which these aliens are willing to take their experiments. I mean, it's not just taking ovum, it's not just taking sperm, it's not just taking DNA, it's not just a skin scrape. They're taking eyeballs out of people's sockets, guys. You know, this is this is very akin to the cattle mutilations where they take their eyeballs, they do the laser and precision in, in cuts into their mouths, um, you know, around the anus, and they take that material and they use it for their DNA purposes, whatever those may be. According to one of my previous podcasts, I discussed where they're actually creating space cows, which seems kind of silly, but in, in all reality, they're just cows that are being reproduced from the DNA that they're stealing during these cattle mutilations. So here we have it, right? They're just taking DNA to create what they want to create, creating hybrids, creating the cows for the, their um, hybrids to feed on, so on and so forth. Now, what's interesting is that Mr. Black has been kind of an advocate for the UFO world, and he's interviewed plenty of abductees. And what he's found is that in the Journal of Abnormal Psychology uh, in 1993, it stated that either UFO reporters are psychologically or psychosocially disturbed or fantasy-prone individuals who confuse their vivid imaginings with external happenings. 
it goes to show you, you know, how far the psychological world, uh, you know, psychiatrists and anyone involved in, in the psych world is willing to take the word of people. It's because the government has, been done, has done such an incredible job of disinformation, of making people feel stupid or look stupid, um, right after Roswell happened, and, you know, they just made an entire mockery of the entire thing, making people believe that these were weather balloons, so on and so forth, and it's just utterly ridiculous. And so they did a really good job of disinformation in the media where anytime somebody says they saw a UFO, they were immediately dismissed as a coog or as somebody who drank too much or took too many drugs or, you know, couldn't perceive things correctly. But, you know, another another podcaster I listen to, he always talks about the fact that our government, our court system, takes eyewitness testimony and uses that eyewitness testimony to directly put someone in jail, to directly incriminate someone. So why can't we take eyewitness testimony of UFO witnesses, UFO abductees, and so on, and government whistleblowers, and use that for real witness testimony? We can't, because because our the way our society is created, we're simply just not doing that. We're simply been told that that we're not perceiving things correctly. What's also interesting is that researchers found that eighty one percent of alleged abductions occur at night, just like we talked about at the beginning of the podcast. According to victim accounts, almost sixty percent are linked with sleep, either occur while they're falling asleep or while they dream. Or when they're waking up. So what's interesting is scientists, uh, in light of these results, think that many accounts of alien abductions are just descriptions of sleep paralysis or total body paralysis. Well, the truth is, is that they're getting paralyzed due to the alien's technology, not because of standard sleep paralysis, which is a normal phenomenon. Uh, it's because of the technology the aliens are capable of, of using typically very similar to using brainwave patterns. Uh, I believe that their technology is very similar to that in that they're able to manipulate brainwaves so that you can't wake up. They don't have to use drugs. They can use brainwave technology to put your brain into an altered state so that they can do the experiments they need to do. And then as soon as they drop you off, they can alter the state to put folks back into a state uh, where they were previously driving, previously sleeping, whatever the case is, they can basically alter the state right back. Now, what's really scary is that folks that were driving, they're putting them back into their cars. They're letting them drive again, right? And that's exactly what they did with these three women uh, in 1976. They just put them right back on the car, right back on the road. I mean, this is January. This is winter time, And they're just like, yeah, whatever. We'll just put you back on the road. And they're so adept at manipulating the brain that they can just allow these folks to totally forget even being put back in the car but awake enough to be able to drive the car and not get injured how is that possible through all of our technology we're not able to do that right if you get put under for surgery if you get put under for whatever you know dental surgery whatever the case is it takes you a while to come back to you know an awakened state if you go to sleep, your body goes into a REM sleep, and then it goes into you know different alpha wave, brain, uh, beta wave, theta waves, and so on and so forth until you wake up. And even when you wake up, you're kind of groggy. You can't just drive a car. <laughs> but here we have it. These guys are so good at their technology. They've developed it. They've experimented with it. They've, they've done what it needs, uh, what needs to happen in order for it to work perfectly. Yet... We still have some species that can't get you back to your house. They put you five cities away, naked, like Travis Walton and like so many others. Can't put them back in their house. Can't even get them in the same city. Can't even get them in the next city. They're multiple cities over, and they keep them for multiple days. So there you have it, folks. Very interesting stuff. Stuff of nightmares. Uh, hopefully you can sleep tonight. Uh, I mean, this may not freak you out um but you know there's been so many abduction cases where they've stated they've implanted uh you know tracking devices implants in folks behind folks eyeballs this is not the first uh it's just the first time i've actually heard about 
somewhat an abductee actually relaying this event through hypnotic regression and stated that their eyeballs were actually on their cheeks. I mean, dude, that's, this is crazy. It's just totally mind blowing to me. And you know, if the government knows about it, then it's no wonder that they're freaked out as well and don't want to tell the public because if the public really knew about that. We'd have a lot of riots on our hands. We'd have a lot of problems on our hands. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I'm going to keep it short and sweet because we have another one coming up. And uh, I'm going to get to it. So, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys are taking care of your physical health, spiritual health, emotional health. Uh, following through on your hobbies and your goals and your dreams. Taking care of those. Taking care of yourself and your family. And as always, continuing to question the universe around you. Until next time, guys, take care. And Lockdown Universe is out.